Hi guys and welcome to Born Anime. It's your girl Bruca. And Big Boy Summer here. Zone 100. Bucket list of the dead. Akira of the dead. They know their audience. It starts with a first person perspective. It's like Resident Evil or any of those zombie type games from way back in the day. All of them were first person shooter based type games. So it started off with a bang, but then it's a mislead. You think it's called Zom 100, you know it's about zombies, we've seen the trailer, so we think we are the MC and the zombie apocalypse is literally happening. But no, it's just a TV show or a movie about zombies. It started off as if it meant to go on. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, they caught me off guard with that one as well, because it was one man and like a million zombies, and I was like, oh my days, is this what they're doing? Straight away, they're just coming in hot, and then they were like, nah, we ain't gonna do that. Okay guys, you got me, but never lost my interest once from beginning to end. And with that, let's just get into this episode. I don't want to call it a love story, but it kind of is. They gave it the right amount of time it deserved, not a lot but enough for you to understand it. Because my man met this woman three years ago and understood very quickly that she was never going to be his woman. Never, ever. She was already someone else's, sort of. But he obviously loved her from the moment he saw her. It's his first love. He's just come out of, you know, uni. He's fresh. He's happy. He's seen new things. And the first pretty girl he's kind of seen that took his breath away, he was like, I love her. But I kind of feel like obviously what happened in the end needed to happen so that we got a clean break and a new start for this bucket list that he's trying to fulfill so what i'm saying is ohito had to die i think that if there's any love story we've got to talk about sari right um she really got a bad deal because dude is not a nice person he's ugly he was overweight and she didn't even get any benefits from it because she was still in the office just as much as everybody else. And on top of that, all your co-workers can hear you. She's not even the main chick. She is a side piece. And then he gave her an ST. And then he turned her into a zombie. <laughs> You're such a I like it though. I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at that. Well done, Ruka. That was clever. Um, okay, look, the end scene between him and Sari and him and his boss, I thought was genius piece of writing there. How many of you guys would like that kind of catharsis of being able to throw your boss <laughs> out of the window? Wow. I just, I'm not saying that you would do it. <laughs> I'm just saying. You fantasized about it. If there was a zombie apocalypse and your boss was a zombie, are you chopping their heads off? You pray about <laughs> it. I just want to know. <laughs> I just want to know. And the way they made it so shonen, like it was the most shonen thing I've ever seen in a joke anime. And I, I, I'm calling this a joke anime. They took serious time. Don't get me wrong. I'm not belittling their effort. But the comedy and whatever yeah. is all throughout. It's not it's, laugh out yeah, loud, but it's it, definitely it's funny. there. The shonen in this hilarity was so on point. I mean, you had the whole Dragon Ball Z, everything fading to black and white in the moment of impact and then the movement out of the window and then the stylized people rooting him on in the glass as it fell because it was just crazy and had to be nonsensical but so impactful then he sees his love say what he came to say to someone who has never and now will never reciprocate that feeling that he had for her and then he ran away because he couldn't bring himself to kill her I thought that was a brilliant piece of writing to bring out emotion out of that yeah, I agree. I thought he was going to kill her, but he chose not to. I love the way it did fade out into a vague sketch of her and then him saying goodbye to his first love. I love the use of colour, just period, going out throughout this. You've already mentioned it, but the use of colour is so clever and it really makes the whole thing beautiful. And the music as well. I like how they have the music and the colors being so vibrant and happy and intense. But what's actually happening, just like the office situation, you've got these two sides where the visuals are just wiling in the background. <laughs> it's crazy, what is going on? And then you've got this happy-go-lucky music running through a <laughs> meadow. 
it's amazing. Like, I love how they've used used it. This whole episode has been about the duality of loads of things and work and freedom always come in. Like, we always hear this phrase, work-life balance, but the main character, Kira, he said, yo, I've been a zombie for three years <laughs> and now I've got my freedom. And it just so happens to be a zombie apocalypse outside. That was kind of crazy. But the work that he had to do, you go out, have some food and drinks, then come back to work to go home, not even shower, then come back to work. Nah, fam, how can no. you live like that? No. His first day was a three day work bender. <laughs> there was no going home. There was no going home. He was there for three days. <laughs> When he woke up the, the following fourth day of work, he said, I wonder how long I'll be away from home this time. <laughs> Maz was expecting it. But I do have a question, Ruka. I've got a huge question. Look, you come in on your first day. Don't you smell anything? Like, do you get what I mean? Don't the room kind of smell a bit fuzzy? You know what I mean? If everyone's working this hard all the time, like, that office should stink. <laughs> like, and you didn't notice? Actually, with the way Japan kind of is structured, it would be easy for them to take a little quick bathroom break in another area close to work. That's true. We all know Ohito was needing some bathroom breaks constantly. So, I mean, you're probably right. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick wash here. Make sure it's clean. Go back to work. Go back to the office. <laughs> this black company is just taking the piss because someone just needs to call the cops at this point it's kidnapping <laughs> it's <laughs> kidnapping and the way that they're trying to make it a joke about betting on how much unpaid overtime that they have done it's like they're trying to get joy from anything <laughs> even their pain another day another ulcer <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me when you start pissing blood. <laughs> bro, these are phrases oh, from employees. Gosh. It was mad, bro. Like, watching this, I was like, oh, well, I've got a huge appreciation for my job because, like, it's not like this. <laughs> it's not like this. <laughs> guys, 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 I know you're enjoying this episode, but I know a lot of you aren't actually subscribed. So all you got to do is just press the subscribe button. It's right there. Don't forget to ding that bell. But... More on the freedom aspect as well, like, you can see he had some sort of synesthesia or something like that where his life and his feeling were directly proportional to the colours. And that gave the, the creators such great leeway to do amazing things with the colours. I, I want to start off by saying the graphics were fantastic here. Like, you can tell they put in a lot of effort to the little details and bringing up old tropes that are visually stunning, like leaves blowing in the wind, things stopping, colours becoming intertwined with black and white while he's moving through his different emotions. I thought that was brilliant. Now, I don't know if it's him having synesthesia or anything like that, but for me, it felt like the from the creator's perspective, they were dragging us into it. I feel like that's why we started off with that first-person perspective. From the very start, they're putting us into it with the character so i feel like the colors were a benefit to us as the viewer to yeah. go along with his emotions so i feel like they did a really massive great job and especially because I, okay i don't want to sound heartless but when animes have like a depressed vibe i just want the character to hurry up and get over it because it's no <laughs> It just feels like, just hurry up and get over it, man. Just get over it so we can get to the enjoyment of the anime. You're so cold. But <laughs> Ruki, you're so cold here. <laughs> but this one does an amazing job of showing his downward spiral and it really grips you. And like I was saying before, it just takes you on the show with the character. A hundred percent. Like you felt every single hour he did in the office. And it was yeah. three years. It yeah. took that three years into two thirds of the episode yeah. and you felt every single minute of it. And like the little motifs, as I said earlier, with the other characters mentioning, like you said, their pain Olympics that they were playing around with mm. each other and a little bit of joy that they were trying to be competitive with, which weren't joyful at all. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, wow guys. Yeah. Talk about immersion. They understood what to do to make the audience come in. Also, 
who shouts out, I'm free in a zombie apocalypse? I just want to know, because I've never seen a zombie thing where that happens. Have you? No. <laughs> no. This was actually the best reaction I've ever seen to a zombie apocalypse. It was the best. Tendo is really a real one because he was not just saying what he was saying. You know, we all say things like, oh, God, I'd rather die. But you wouldn't really. He meant it. When he was contemplating jumping in front of the train, he meant it. I felt it. With the foreshadowing, earlier on in the episode, he said he would rather have the zombie apocalypse. At least he wouldn't have to go to work. When the zombie apocalypse actually happened, he was like, oh my God, I don't have to go to work. <laughs> he meant it. He actually flipping meant it. Quick side note. You know the moment where we're first introduced to a zombie, where basically the guy's eating out the girl on the floor. How normal is that? I'm knocking on the guy's door, the, the maintenance guy's door to get the bike key or whatever it is. And I just open the door. That's a zombie. And then he runs. And then when you see the stream of zombies coming after him, it just fell back into the beginning of the episode. And I thought, you know yeah, what? Yeah, it really did. Flipping brilliant. Same colours, the same look to the zombies. I thought that was really, really great. And I, what I did note was the splashes of weird, random colours going on throughout the thing. And it, to me, it felt like he was fighting or not necessarily Tendo was fighting, but his sensibilities were fighting the shackles of having to go to work before the freedom. So the black and white was clashing with the splashes of colour it by itself could be an essay and I just thought it was brilliant. I feel like Tendo is really gangster because his ability to just sit out in the open with these zombies, the zombies are fast and they're everywhere and he's just sitting, he's just sitting down enjoying life, breathing in fresh air, looking at life with new eyes. <laughs> he's got that Deku stupidness. He's <laughs> got that Deku stupidness. Oh. And you don't know what I mean, in it. I'm gonna do my bucket list before I die. Like, wait, what? Are you okay? Like, what else is he gonna do? <laughs> no, I get that. But you don't have to be happy about it. Like, he's so cheerful. Like, it's, it's actually, like, disturbing in some aspect. Because my man prayed for this. He got it. If you take that in a vacuum, you go like, what else is he supposed to do? I get it. He got it, got super happy that most of the population has turned into zombies and he doesn't have to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> then decided, I'm going to change my entire life and do the things I just want to do. The beaming out of his face, it just got that Deku stupidness and I love it. I'm not going to lie, I love it. And his rugby skills came into play here quite well and was very useful to get away from these zombies. That's why my man can sit out in the open because he knows none of these zombies can touch him. He just wrongly tackled a fat zombie out of a flipping window, bro. He's untouchable right now. Okay, you know what? Let's rate. So I will give this episode a nine and a half out of 10. The half being that for the first two thirds, I was so anticipating waiting for zombies and I didn't get it. I understand why. I get it, but it's my personal opinion. Nine and a half out of 10. 10 out of 10. I think that this is a banger of an episode. It's a really good first episode for an anime as well. It sets its bar high. I was not anticipating the zombies. I was along for the ride with Tendo. They did everything correct. I don't really have any negatives to say about it. It's a 10. First of all, thank you so much for watching our episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, it's Bob Anime Insta. Peace.